Welcome back, Alpha Hunters. Okay, the market just over, so let's get into a quick overview of the market and what we saw this past week. As we did have a slew up, oh, I guess a slew is slew like even a word, or is it just something that we use as a word? And I don't know even know if it's really even a word. All right, we had a bunch of earnings this past week. Uh, we had Microsoft, Intel, Apple was last night. I'm not gonna go into all that all that kind of breakdown, but what we did see is the S&P kind of did, or the SPY S&P kind of did come down into this zone that I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and move now this pivot to right there. And I could see this probably pulling over to the 450 area, right to the bottom of this support, right? So we had resistance back here. Then it turned into a support twice, and now we broke through it. I am looking for a pull up into that area. I actually did try to play it short uh, as we didn't break through the 200 moving average yesterday, uh, but obviously I'm getting a little smoked on that right now. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna see what the market does first thing on Monday, Tuesday. If the, if the market's kind of in my favorite Monday, I'll look to maybe hold it to Tuesday, but probably be looking to close that out as I, re I really did want us to come up into this area. And then one of the biggest reasons why is as we look at the Qs or the NASDAQ 100, you know, we know that the, the Qs, they broke off pretty good. Uh, we definitely cleared this support back here uh, from October. So we definitely broke through some levels big time. Obviously we got well under the 200, way more than the SPY did. So I was actually really kind of expecting the Qs to bounce and come up and contact that 200 moving average before we the market rolled over. That's really what I'm lo I'm looking for is that pull up into the 200 on the Qs. Okay, so it's going to be interesting. We'll see if it happens. We also do have a lot more earnings this next week. I know Amazon and Google are on tap, so we'll see if that works out. Uh, Tesla got hammered this week. I know a lot of a lot of people do like to play Tesla. I actually did pick up a short for Tesla this next, for this next Friday. Not really my style, but I was kind of having a buddy. So I just went ahead and got into a position, uh, but that's fine. I just kind of kept it tight as I, I did a nine, uh, a 790 by 780 bear put vertical. But I really wanted Tesla to pull up into this support right here. If, and we might get that this next week up into maybe the 890 to 900 area then I might look for uh, a rollover short on Tesla. But since I did get into that trade, uh, I was kind of wanting to kind of protect myself in case the market did rip it higher like it did towards the end of day today. So I did pick up an IBM long by, of 134 by 136. So I'm actually already a little bit in the money on the one I bought. So this was a bull call vertical. So, and this is also for next Friday. It's just kind of F hedge and offset that, that Tesla position. I, I didn't really care to get into, but it was okay. And for the middle part of the day, Tesla actually went, went down while IBM was going up. So it was just kind of interesting to, to see that. So IBM was kind of going up through here and Tesla started going down in that middle part of the day. So it was just kind of one of those circumstances where they both were kind of working in your favor. I'm going to get back to the spy real quick. Okay. So, what I do want to see here on the SPY S&P. So you know what I want out of the Qs? I think the Qs, the NASDAQ 100. So I do think the Qs kind of come up into that 200 moving average, maybe the 100. And if the, the Qs and the NASDAQ do that, how far up does the SPY go? The SPY might get all the way back up to like 460, potentially. I don't really know. Um, Apple... Apple, obviously, with their earnings last night, really held the market up today. And what was very interesting to see was how weak the market was today with how good Apple's earnings were, right? Apple is the biggest weight on the market. And since it's the biggest weight, it gapped up, uh, I think it was like four and a half, five percent. Let me see real quick. So I did actually pick up a uh, Apple short. That's what you're seeing up there. Uh, four percent up. And uh, I'll explain this real quick. So the what what I was 
kind of surprised that was how Apple gapped up four, a little bit over four percent, and the market really was lackluster until like the last two hours of the day, really the last hour and a half. So I was kind of kind of surprised by that. It just means that there's a lot of weakness out there. You really just need to protect yourself, uh, especially since you know Tesla. Tesla was super super inflated valuations, and this was Thursday. So the day after their earnings, they were they announced earnings Wednesday after the market. Thursday came in and we just, it just traded down the whole day. I actually thought it would gap up and then trade down kind of like this, but it just opened down and then sold off the whole day. That was a that was roughly 11% down day. Yeah, 11.5% down day on on Tesla just one day. And it was it was a day when the market wasn't really getting crushed that bad. So it is, it is one of those things where there are, there is still a lot of weakness out there and we might go into a period where, you know, the market maybe goes bullish as we have seen some moves down over the past couple of weeks to where we can see some relief rallies and, th and that kind of thing. So let me talk about this Apple trade that I put on. So Apple formed a inverted head and shoulders. So we got a shoulder here, which that's a little high, a head here and then a shoulder with a neckline right here with a double tap on the neckline right so inverted head and shoulder not inverted head and shoulder a head and shoulder pattern or maybe even a double top pattern it's kind of a kind of like a hunchback head and shoulders but what i was looking for was a pull up into that neckline as we broke through it last week as we broke that down so i was looking for a retest of that neckline and then a rollover so that is one reason why i didn't mind holding on to my spy puts as Apple kind of did way so much on the market and really kind of helped drive it up that if Apple did just maybe just pull into this and then what if we open down and roll over, you know, there's a reason why I kind of went out and gave me some time to see if the market kind of shakes out. This trade and my spy puts obviously will depend very much on where we go on the market on Monday. If it's definitely not in my favor right away on Monday morning, I'll probably look to close both of these and not a big deal. I'll just protect my, protect my capital. But, but for right now, I am very protective of capital. I have actually moved a much of my risk and actually cut it in half on what I'm risking on my trades. And I would probably advise you to do that too. And if you are not protecting some long-term value, I, I definitely think you, you probably want to do that. And this is what I want to show you now. Okay. This is the S and P 500 returns. Okay. The green line S and P 500 returns over since roughly 20, tw or I'm sorry, not 20, uh, 1929. Okay. So basically this is the crash that happened from then. And then this tr dotted trend line, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. This dotted trend line, it's basically just the trend line of this. But basically what you need to know is this is an exponential chart, okay? Because if it's not an exponential chart and I just turn the exponential part of it off, you know, this is what you get, right? It's always going to look exponential. So this is why you always, when you're looking long-term, you need to have on logarithmic scale or some form of of normalizing or log log scale or exponential scale or or something something like that but what i wanted to show off was anytime we get above the dotted line we do come back to it okay and this is the tech bubble back in the late 90s and we kind of pulled down to it and we pulled down pretty good i've already shown how much we pulled down in some other videos and then we pulled down pretty good here from the financial crash and we have deviated from it quite substantially, okay? This is an area where once we get far enough above this line, I don't put new long-term capital into the market. I just don't. I will look for the normalized trend move back to the normalizing trend. And so this is something that I would highly advise that you guys should do too. I would protect positions. I would protect capital. Doesn't mean you have to sell. I do get it. Some people are like, I don't want to sell. I have to pay the tax man. I get it. You can buy puts. You know, puts will help protect a lot of your value, especially if you're in some of those big 
high-flying tech stocks over the past several years that we've seen tremendous growth, right? Tremendous market gains. Tesla being one of them. So I definitely could see Tesla pulling down 80 to 95% from its all-time high. I know that's lunacy. It's always lunacy when it's, you know, up a lot, but but you know, it, it happens. Like it happens all the time. And I've I've shown that before from tech the tech bubble burst and stuff like that. And another thing that I want to show is there was an article, you know, go over to the Discord. It's uh, down in the description area. Go over to the Discord, go over to the interesting news and go to this article, realinvestmentadvice.com. I don't really care for headlines when you see this, like we're in an epic bubble, that kind of thing. But I was very interested in seeing what they meant by an epic bubble. That is kind of the part that I do like to break down and dispel some of these articles. But this was actually a very well-written article. There was only one issue with a chart in there that I didn't care for because they didn't use like, uh, you know, an exponential chart based on like long-term prices from the 2019 bottom or 2009 bottom. That was the only chart I basically kind of didn't, didn't care for, but they did show a longer term exponential price trend chart like this, but there's what there's had more data. They went back to like 1900. I don't have access to that much data. So it was just kind of very interesting to see and what they kind of thought about where we are now to where we have been before. It was, it was very nice to kind of see that and kind of see, uh, cause I actually came up with this chart, I think last weekend. And then this, I saw this article this week and I was like, Oh cool. Someone else saw, saw what I was looking at. That's very interesting. So with all that being said, I, I do think it is just maybe a time to protect some capital. We could go back to all time highs. We could be at like this point, right? of of the market where we just have a quick pullback and then we go up back up higher and get even more inflated and we get real choppy here so i'm gonna i'm gonna look do some analysis potentially on next week's video around the tech bubble and what maybe see if we can find some patterns and relationships because with everybody saying oh man the tech is super inflated and stuff like that well let's go back and look at the tech bubble to see if we can find some relationships and see if we can apply that to today's market, okay? To see if we can potentially maximize our gains and, you know, get into puts at a more optimal spot and that kind of thing. But if we don't break down Monday, then yeah, I think we'll go a little bit higher before we potentially roll over. My long-term area though, uh, pull this up. This green area, this green box down here, this is roughly where that exponential line is. And so you can definitely, anything below like 350 on the SPY, I would definitely just start buying up some stuff as the downside is mostly gone. Okay, so that's if we break down. I do think we probably will eventually, whether we go back to all time highs and maybe you know do all that, but I, I don't know. I don't think we, we will. I think once earnings are done, we'll definitely start seen more lows okay so yeah just make sure you protect your capital buy some puts if you don't want to get out and go to cash you know those kinds of things that way you don't have to pay the tax man your capital gains is capital gains is <laughs> capital gains on on you know whatever gains you got you know buy some puts and then you know as you make money on the puts on the pullback you can use the gains from the pullback on your puts to buy more of a stock or a company that you really do like and it's not not a bad game plan that's kind of the way i'm looking to play that on a few okay so hopefully this was insightful for you guys and just trying to help you through this because it's it's going to be a process it's going to be choppy it's going to be tough Alrighty, take care alpha hunters